Good morning. July 5th. Today is going to be my like catch up on work day. Clearly I'm still in my pajamas and I have bed. I was planning on getting up at 8 and going to do cardio but I didn't get to bed until about 1.30 last night and the past two mornings I woke up pretty early around 6.30, 7 o'clock. That's my body's normal alarm clock in the morning. I actually ended up falling back asleep and I never do that but I'm about six weeks out and I'm a little bit more tired than usual. I'm a little bit more fatigued than usual. My body needs a little bit more recovery time than usual because I am in a deficit and I have been in a caloric deficit for about 10 weeks now or so. It's just one of the side effects of being in a caloric deficit. This morning, I kind of wanted to take a minute to discuss something that might be something important to talk about on my channel now that I've gained a solid amount of new subscribers over the last like month or so. In the beginning of my prep series, when I started my prep, I made a lot of disclaimers. I talked about what my prep series was going to be about. For me, it's me documenting my bodybuilding bikini prep, showing you guys everything that I'm doing. I'm being really open and honest and transparent with my macros, which um, I talked about in previous videos like my first couple of videos I talked about this a lot saying that it's definitely controversial for me to express what my macros are especially since they're so low and especially since number one not every single person who follows me is here to follow my bikini prep a lot of you guys come to my videos just for motivation inspiration take the lessons learned in the videos and just make your lives better that's kind of the point of the channel however I'm also doing that while documenting my bodybuilding prep my bikini prep so I realize that that's not necessarily, like me sharing all that information isn't necessarily going to teach you guys how to do something for yourself because it's what I'm doing for myself and everybody's very individual, everybody's very different. I have been a online coach for quite some time. There's plenty of people here that will say that I'm not qualified, but I do have my bachelor's degree in nursing and I do have a lot of research behind me and experience that I've done on my own, only in the past coach lifestyle clients. So people who are just looking to get healthy, people who are just looking to change their body, change their mindset. So I'm very aware of what um, the general population is doing, should be doing. It's not that different from a bikini prep, but it is in terms of mindset and it also is in terms of how extreme you have to get. So yes, I'm very aware that I do have a large platform. I do have a lot of subscribers on here on YouTube. I do have a lot of people watching my every move, seeing what I do in my bikini prep, and maybe you guys are taking everything that I do and doing it for yourselves. But what I'm doing isn't necessarily my recommendations for what you should do. Just because you see the way that I look and you see the way that I live, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be doing that for yourself. If you're looking to get more information on what you should personally do, I would recommend finding and hiring a good coach that has your best intentions at heart and not just copying what a bunch of YouTubers are doing, what someone who has like the body type or the or the level of leanness that you want to look like or what want to achieve. You shouldn't just copy what someone else is doing. I know that a lot of you guys are really smart because I do read the comments and I'm constantly impressed by most of the comments and what you guys say. I do want you guys to challenge yourselves to be critical thinkers here. So take what I'm saying and what I'm doing and all the other people that you may be watching on YouTube as well. Take something that everybody's doing but Try to think critically and think about applying it to yourself in a way that makes sense for you, not necessarily what makes sense for a bikini competitor, someone who's going to extremes to get to a stage level leanness. I also just wanted to discuss quickly <laughs> um, what bodybuilding competitions are. So the goal of a bodybuilding competition is to get to a level of leanness that is 
um, not necessarily maintainable, sustainable for a normal life. So what I'm going through right now is more of an extreme than what the general population should be going to to get to like their goal body or to just get healthy. Um, I'm getting to a stage level leanness that's gonna be comparable to other people for the sport. So it's a sport, it's extreme, it's not maintainable year round. So after my prep ends, like my diet has an end date. After that ends, I'm gonna go into a caloric surplus and my goals are going to switch. It's not gonna be based off of 100% what I look like, although I like to keep an aesthetic looking body uh, throughout the year. I don't necessarily stay stage lean or my focus isn't necessarily to be lean and to look as lean as possible during the whole year. I have other goals, I have powerlifting goals, I have strength goals, I have athletic goals. The goal should not always be based around what you look like. So I did wanna discuss that a little bit. I did just wanna say that me sharing my macros is controversial. I don't want anyone to take exactly what I'm doing and apply it to themselves because what I'm doing is an extreme for the sport. Yes, I am six weeks out from a show. I am doing a bodybuilding competition. What I am doing is not sustainable for year round. It's my personal body. That's my personal choice. I just don't necessarily want to give off the wrong impression here on the channel. I want to keep it real, but I also want to keep it honest. And I also want to keep it educational and informational, not just for the fitness bodybuilding community, but for the general community as well. So um, please let me know if you guys have thought that in my past videos or what your thoughts are on this particular topic, because I will respond back. I do think it's really important. The supplements that I'm currently taking for my bikini prep include creatine, BCAAs, I'm taking, I take a fat burner pre-workout for my pre-workout, and I'm also taking a multivitamin, I take a digestive enzyme, I take a probiotic. These supplements are not necessary. So if we're comparing bikini prep, bodybuilding prep versus normal life, I would highly, highly recommend multivitamin, fish oil, which I'm also taking. I would highly recommend creatine. Even females, I do think creatine is really helpful if you want to take your training to the next level. If you're interested in any supplements at all, I would go to examine.com and you can literally search all the studies for any supplement or any ingredient that you're interested in and you have questions about. So go to examine.com if you're curious. But for me, what I'm personally taking, just help take my training and my prep to the next level. They're not necessary. Since I'm an athlete, um, they do help me probably 1% more than they would have helped me if um, I wasn't taking them. So I am showing you guys like I always do. PE science supplements are what I take. Amino IV for my intro workout. Um, I also take Ergonine. If you guys are interested in any of the PE science products, I'm going to link the video that I talk about all these products in. Um, so I'm taking that. And I'm also going to do cardio, so I'm going to take some Alpamine, which is the fat burner product that PE science has. But since this video is going to be about bodybuilding competitions versus real life, I'm gonna tell you guys, you don't need any of this. Take some multivitamin, take a fish oil. Um, you can get all of your supplement necessary needs from food, make sure you're getting plenty of micronutrients, make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Water is huge if you're looking for um, a, f a really cheap fat burner slash caffeine. Coffee's great. Cardio session is done. I completed 30 minutes of cardio today. In terms of cardio for bodybuilding bikini competitions versus cardio for real life healthy people, just regular gym goers trying to get better in better shape, I would definitely recommend that you do keep cardio in your routine, but you just add it in as a supplement to your weight training or use it as something that you actually enjoy. Not everybody has to do cardio to get lean. So if you're looking at my channel, seeing me do cardio, I mentioned that I do it four or five times a week for 30 minutes at this point. I track it with my polar heart rate monitor. If you see me doing that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be doing that also. So for example, there's plenty of people that can get lean or that can lose body fat without having to do cardio. There's also plenty of people that do have to add in extra cardio in order to uh, see those changes happening. And I definitely see a lot of people especially females going for cardio first. I recommend lifting weights first, getting that muscle building foundation. You don't exactly have to just 
get on the cardio machine and burn as many calories as you've eaten because you can physically see it on the cardio machine. That's where a lot of people go wrong. That's probably like the number one thing that I see females do wrong first. They're usually cardio and abs and that's it. I highly recommend doing a, a balanced structured weight program and supplementing with extra cardio if you so want to, if you so choose, if you so enjoy it. Definitely do cardio that you actually enjoy. So I really enjoy treadmill sprints, treadmill walking. I hate the Stairmaster. I don't go on it. I do enjoy doing outside cardio. So I really like walking. I like biking. So choosing any of those things for yourself, just make sure whatever cardio Cardio you do you actually enjoy it I also just stopped at my PO box and I got a couple of packages in the mail because I mentioned where my PO box is in the description box I never get like any mail or anything like that so we're gonna go ahead and open a couple of these so this one's from hope I think she was at the Pardoma's workshop if I remember correctly this is so cute eat more whole foods Happy birthday, Amanda. Hope your birthday falls on a high carb day so you can enjoy some birthday froyo. It's good to see your arm doing so well that you're back to kicking butt on prep. Good luck these next few weeks. I'll be cheering for you from Austin, Texas. My birthday, the 25th, is on the 14th. So thank you, Hope. Happy birthday. This is the cutest card ever. This one's from Erin from Kentucky. Happy birthday. You have very nice handwriting, Erin. Kind of like nice and clean. I appreciate your clean organized sentence structure, by the way. Wishing you a very happy birthday from Kentucky. Cheers to a new year of health, fitness, friendships, love, and happiness. Thank you for allowing me and many others to be a part of your life. Your daily accountability, inspiration, and knowledge truly help. I have applied so much of your knowledge, tips, and recommendations to my fitness routine in life. I look forward to your YouTube, Snapchat, and Instagram every day. Lastly, thank you for being such an amazing, genuine person. Your positivity and smile are contagious. Good luck with the rest of your prep. You're loving, I hope you're loving your new home. Have an amazing day, my friend best Erin and her IG is Erin with two N's Egbert XOXO that was really really sweet thank you so much Erin next one is Erica from Colorado it's a cute little card with an arrow on it I love that happy birthday Amanda hope you have a great day I truly enjoy your Instagram and your YouTube you're so positive motivating and informative heart Erica dot gets dot fit Erica thank you Erica that was really nice this is cool happy birthday Amanda you don't know me so it feels a bit strange for me to write to you but I thought for your birthday might be the perfect way for me to tell you how much you inspire me and how deeply you've influenced my life where and where I am now. A couple of months ago, I was kind of the per I was the kind of person sitting behind the desk giving my life to work and I was scared to change. I was really frustrated. I almost had a burnout and that was when I decided to quit my job in advertising to follow my dream, be a personal trainer and lift like crazy. There's some days where I'm down where I watch your videos and motivation gets back to me. So thank you Amanda for sharing your life and experiences. That was really really nice, Caroline. I'm like crying, that was so cute. I'm really glad that I went to go stop my P.O. box because I almost wasn't going to, but thank you guys so much. That was really nice. I'm like touched, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. So I almost ate this without showing you guys. Instead of me trying to explain what I have in here, I'm just gonna show you. This is the dressing that I use, creamy roasted garlic. 30 grams of it is 2.5 fat, three carb, one protein. I also did pico de gallo banana peppers, a serving of spring mix, or baby spinach, sorry, a serving of shredded lettuce, taco seasoned ground turkey by Jenny O, and then 100 grams of onions and peppers. And I think that was it. In the salad we go, face plant, big bowl is uh, key, by the way. <laughs> There was a quick moment that I considered not finishing my salad. I don't know why. I was it was a very very large salad and it made me really full. Like I'm very full right now. Can I keep you guys there? I have a food baby currently. It's basically just what a full stomach looks like. It's not fat, it's just a full stomach. Okay, so back to the theme bikini prep, bodybuilding prep versus real life. I had that salad. I tracked the spring mix. I tracked the shredded lettuce. I tracked the pico de gallo. Um, and I counted for those things in my carb macros. When you are not on a competition prep, you totally don't have to do that. Um, if I tracked all of those carbs, it does equate to like 
20 or so, 20 maybe, 22 or something like that. Because my carb macros are so low and my, my on my low carb days, and when my coach makes changes to my macros, um, they're usually like within 10 carbs or so, I have to get pretty specific with everything that I track. However, you do not have to track your vegetables if you don't want to. If you're eating the same amount of vegetables every single day, or if you're just getting like a handful of lettuce and you want to throw it in there, you don't have to track everything to the gram. Um, in my ebook, my The Everything Guide to Macro Tracking, I actually discuss a whole section on like how lenient you can be depending on what your goals are. So if you're just trying to get healthy, you do not, you do not have to track every single macro to the gram. Macro tracking is essentially just a guideline to teach you portion, portion sizes, to teach you what is in your food, to teach you how much your body can handle depending on what you're eating, what your goals are, everything like that. I think it's a really amazing guideline and it's, in a really, it's a really great way to be very specific, especially if you have a specific goal, an end date goal, things like that. It's, I think it's really important to actually learn how to track your macros just for like food education purposes because um, you can take all that information with you for the rest of your life and you know what's in your food and that's just like important information to know for health purposes for the rest of your life. But you don't have to track every single thing all the time. It doesn't have to become an obsession. Bikini competitions and bodybuilding competitions, you have to get a little bit more specific, like I mentioned before. Is this the candle they use to describe who your Tinder girlfriend or boyfriend is? Tinder flame. <laughs> My little Tinder flame. And I got a new dish soap thing. I also put this guy together. It's my <laughs> handy dandy, handy dandy tripod holder. But yeah, I got this on Amazon and I just put it together with a little screwdriver. Um, I got my Glow Pro tans in the mail, very excited. I put that on today. And here we are in my bathroom. I feel so adult with a candle and a soap dispenser. I'm really making moves here. I also bought this new lamp that is very similar to the soap dispenser but it's a lamp. The whole premise of this video was essentially just to show you guys what I do, what many competitors do, what the point of their channels are, what the point of my channel is, and in comparison to just the general population. It all depends on you, it all depends on your goals, it all depends on what you want. If you want to be a competitor, that's amazing. If you don't, don't bother. It's it's a different kind of lifestyle. I personally very much enjoy it, so I'm gonna keep doing it, and I'm gonna keep showing you guys what I'm doing because I that is the point of my channel. This is my this is my platform. This is my domain. But I do realize how many people are following me, and I do like to put out a message that is clear of what my intentions are um, and showing you guys what my prep is like. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, rest of your night, whatever time you're watching this. I appreciate you guys, as always, for watching all the videos, and give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys giving it a thumbs up. It really, really helps me out. It helps with the channel, helps me grow. If you guys wanna help me grow, then giving it a thumbs up is exactly what you, uh, what you can do. So thank you guys. I will catch you guys in the next video, and Thank you for watching.